In 1829, Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon Church, claimed to have translated ancient gold plates by the power of God, which he also claimed were a historical and scriptural record written by the ancient people of the Americas. He said he translated the plates into English by the power of God and it became the Book of Mormon, contrary to the mainstream church view that he translated them by using a translation tool that was with the plates when Joseph dug them up. The actual method of his translation was the use of a peepstone, or seer stone. At the time, peepstones were used by treasure diggers to locate treasure buried in the ground. These treasure diggers were known as glass lookers. Joseph Smith and his father, Joseph Smith Sr., were both engaged in this type of folk magic for treasure digging. Joseph even used his peepstone to decide who to marry. Joseph Knight Sr. was an associate of Joseph Smith's, and lended his sled to Joseph so he could court Emma Hale, and later Joseph and Emma borrowed his wagon when they were going to dig up the gold plates. Knight explained how Joseph decided who to marry. He said, Joseph looked in his glass and found it was Emma Hale. Joseph obtained this peepstone while employed by Willard Chase to dig a well. Chase was also into money digging as were the Smiths. Willard Chase recounted how the stone was found. He said, I became acquainted with the Smith family, known as the authors of the Mormon Bible, in the year 1820. At that time, they were engaged in the money digging business, which they followed until the latter part of the season of 1827. In the year 1822, I was engaged in digging a well. I employed Alvin and Joseph Smith to assist me, the latter of whom is now known as the Mormon Prophet. After digging about twenty feet below the surface of the earth, we discovered a singularly appearing stone, which excited my curiosity. I brought it to the top of the well, and as we were examining it, Joseph put it into his hat, and then his face into the top of his hat. It has been said by Smith that he brought the stone from the well, but this is false. There was no one in the well but myself. The next morning he came to me and wished to obtain the stone, alleging that he could see in it. But I told him I did not wish to part with it on account of its being a curiosity, but would lend it. Later in 1830, during the month when the church was organized, Willard Chase mentioned talking with Hiram Smith, older brother of Joseph Smith. He said, In April, 1830, I again asked Hiram for the stone which he had borrowed of me. He told me I should not have it, for Joseph made use of it in translating his Bible. In 1829, Joseph Smith and his wife Emma, and also Oliver Cowdery, the main scribe for the Book of Mormon translation, moved into the house of David Whitmer to do the translation, who was a friend of Oliver Cowdery's. David Whitmer described the process of translating. He said, Joseph Smith would put the seer stone into a hat, and put his face in the hat, drawing it closely around his face to exclude the light, and in the darkness the spiritual light would shine. A piece of something resembling parchment would appear, and on that appeared the writing. One character at a time would appear, and under it was the interpretation in English. Brother Joseph would read off the English to Oliver Cowdery, who was his principal scribe, and when it was written down and repeated to Brother Joseph to see if it was correct, then it would disappear, and another character with the interpretation would appear. Thus the Book of Mormon was translated by the gift and power of God, and not by any power of man. B. H. Roberts, a church scholar and member of the Mormon Quorum of the Seventy, recounted what Martin Harris, a temporary scribe to Joseph Smith and also funded the original printing of the Book of Mormon, said about the translation process. By aid of the seer stone, sentences would appear and were read by the prophet and written by Martin. And when finished he would say written, and if correctly written, the sentence would disappear and another appear in its place. But if not written correctly, it remained until corrected, so that the translation was just as it was engraven on the plates, precisely in the language then used. Joseph Smith's wife Emma also served as a temporary scribe for Joseph. She said in an interview with her son, Joseph Smith III, In writing for your father, I frequently wrote day after day, often sitting at the table close by him, he sitting with his face buried in his hat, with the stone in it, and dictating hour after hour, with nothing between us. Also Smith's brother, William Smith, said, The manner in which this was done was by looking into the Urim and Thummim, which was placed in a hat to exclude the light, the plates lying nearby, covered up and reading off the translation, which appeared in the stone by the power of God. Although Joseph Smith claimed the gold plates were written and preserved by ancient inhabitants of the Americas, for the purpose of becoming modern scripture, it is evident that Joseph Smith did not use the gold plates to translate the Book of Mormon, and only used his peepstone in a hat, the same peepstone he used in his treasure-hunting career.